from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, November the 6th, 2024. We open with response from Israel and the Jewish world to the news of Donald Trump's election victory in the 2024 presidential election. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu congratulated Trump, telling him your historic return to the White House offers a new beginning for America and a powerful recommitment to the great alliance between Israel and America. Israel's President Isaac Herzog wrote to Trump, you are a true and dear friend of Israel and a champion of peace and cooperation in our region. I look forward to working with you to strengthen the ironclad bond between our peoples, to build a future of peace and security for the Middle East, and to uphold our shared values. Several Jewish organizations shared congratulations with Trump, including the Anti-Defamation League, who wrote, We look forward to working with the incoming administration, Congress, and all elected officials in pursuit of our 111-year-old mission to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and secure justice and fair treatment to all. We remain steadfastly committed to that timeless mission as we fight the torrent of anti-Semitism sweeping our society, along with all forms of hate and extremism, offline and online, on campuses and in schools, in the U.S. and around the world. And CEO of the American Jewish Committee, Ted Deutsch, said the AJC looks forward to working with President-elect Trump and his administration on the domestic and foreign policy concerns that are AJC's advocacy priorities, noting the global Jewish community is still reeling from the horrific Hamas attack on Israel of October the 7th, the ensuing surge of anti-Semitism, the sustained campaign of Hezbollah attacks that started on October the 8th, and Israel's seven-front defensive war against the radical Iranian regime and its terror proxies. Deutsch saying the conflicts we are currently seeing around the world reflect a dangerous collusion among anti-democratic regimes and non-state actors. The U.S. must exert clear global leadership and be a stabilizing power as the world contends with these many threats. Well, more now on the dismissal yesterday of Israel's Minister of Defense, Yoav Gallant, by Prime Minister Netanyahu. In a press conference last night, Gallant, visibly emotional, told the public that his dismissal stems from disagreements with the prime minister on three main issues. The need, he said, to draft Haredi, ultra-Orthodox men, into the IDF the moral obligation and responsibility, he said, to bring our kidnapped sons and daughters back home as quickly as possible, with as many alive as possible. And the third, the need for a state commission of inquiry into the October 7th Hamas massacre. Galan said the security of the state of Israel was and will always remain the mission of my life. And he ended his speech with a salute. He said, here on this occasion, I wish to salute the fallen and their families, the wounded and the disabled, the captives and their families, and the IDF fighters, wherever they may be. I trust you and salute you. President Herzog, in response to the firing last night, wrote that the last thing the state of Israel needs right now is an upheaval and a rupture in the middle of the war. He said the security of the state of Israel must be above all considerations, noting the hostages still in captivity now for 397 days and ongoing war. Herzog said our sons and daughters are fighting shoulder to shoulder at the front, and the role of the leadership is to act with great responsibility at this time. And thousands of Israelis took to the streets last night in protest of the firing of Gallant in Tel Aviv, blocking the city's main highway, the Ayalon, and near the prime minister's residence in Jerusalem, as well as several other cities across the country. Protests in Jerusalem and elsewhere continue today. Red alert sirens sounded in Tel Aviv today and other parts of central Israel, as well as in northern Israel, as terror group Hezbollah fired dozens of rockets at the areas this morning and again this afternoon. Most were intercepted. Debris from an intercepted rocket 
hit an empty parked car in Ranana, and according to the Times of Israel, one rocket also made impact in an area near Ben Gurion Airport. However, the Israel Airport's authority was cited as saying that the airport was open and working normally for arrivals and departures. The IDF also intercepted several drones launched from Lebanon, and a rocket was also launched today from Gaza at the border community of Kisufim in southern Israel. It was intercepted. Two people were lightly hurt in a car ramming attack near Shiloh in Samaria, the West Bank where the IDF said a terrorist tried to run over civilians at the intersection, then got out of his vehicle and tried to carry out a stabbing attack. The terrorist was neutralized at the scene. The victims were said to be a 26-year-old woman and a 15-year-old boy, both taken to the hospital for treatment. Two busts of Israel's first president, Chaim Weizmann, were stolen by members of a UK-based anti-Israel group, who broke into the University of Manchester this past Friday night, saying this was in protest of Weizmann's part in the signing of the Balfour Declaration 107 years ago. And this week, the group shared images on social media of one of the busts decapitated, writing, first bust of Weizmann is dead, soon his Zionist project will be too. CEO of the ADL Jonathan Greenblatt writing, the path forward is clear arrest these criminals and ban the organization before things escalate. Police are investigating. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, November the 6th. At 7, David Harris speaks with former member of Knesset and best-selling author Anat Wilf about her perspectives on Israel post-October the 7th. At 7.30, Rabbi Emil Hirsch delivers a sermon inspired by Mark Twain's essay, The Character of Man. At 8, Franklin Fuhr and Ted Deutsch join Rabbi Abraham Bronstein to discuss rising anti-Semitism, the impact of October the 7th, and the election. At 9, it's Jewish historians Jeffrey Gurak, Jonathan Sarna, and Shuli Rubin Schwartz on the Chaim. At 10, a replay of Rabbi Hirsch's speech. At 10.30, an encore of the news. And coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, November the 6th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader, Am Yisrael Chai.